The world of taxidermy uses many mold making and casting techniques to create convincing reproductions for unique decor applications. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how we made these reproduction deer antlers by first creating a two-part silicone mold supported by a rigid shell backing, and then cast in one of BJB's castable polyurethanes. Get ready as BJB continues to take the mystery out of materials. Taking a mold off of a complex organic shape like deer antlers presents interesting challenges and can be approached several different ways using a variety of materials. If you're looking to produce a mold that features a clean parting line and consistently aligns itself back together without a lot of extra effort, building a splitter board and creating a definitive parting line allows you to put the line where you need it and also create very clean parts with minimal cleanup after demolding. If you're trying to produce many castings for production, Creating a high quality mold that produces consistent parts saves time and money. The first step in the process is to figure out how we'll build our splitter board. Because of the curvature of the antlers, we need a flexible material to copy the lines and shape. Using blue painter's tape, we stack several layers to produce the general outline of our antler. Once we're done, you can simply peel the tape off and transfer it to a flat sheet of 1 8 inch styrene. Styrene is an easy material to work with, and you'll see shortly how well we can create the shape needed. Using a bandsaw, we cut off the excess area of styrene to produce the shape needed and allow us more flexibility later in the process. Some relief cuts are put around the edges to allow easier bending and forming of the styrene. The lines for the antler placement are transferred to the styrene using a marker and tape is removed. Using a heat gun while wearing work gloves for safety, the styrene is carefully heated and bent to follow the shape of the antler. Hot glue is used to secure the antler to the styrene. Plastilina modeling clay is used to build up our mold split line, or parting plane, that determines where the two halves of the mold are divided. The clay allows us to build up and sculpt the desired parting line as it follows around the organic shape. Sculpting tools are used to create accurate and smooth intersections with the antler. When we're done sculpting the parting line, marbles are pressed into the clay to create alignment keys for the two halves of the mold. We prefer to mold in alignment key features rather than cutting them in later. It creates a much cleaner finished product and they create a very positive interlock. Before we begin to mix up our first batch of silicone, we build a quick mold box to help create silicone registration keys needed later in the mold making process. We will go over this in more detail later in the video. It's time to mix our first batch of silicone. We're using BJB's TC5024 tin based silicone with our SC5000 tin accelerator to speed up the layering process. Only a few drops are needed to help shorten the gel time between layers. We mix up a large batch of silicone so we can pour our extra registration key mold before moving to the antlers. The mold is filled to about 3 8 inch high or 8 to 9 millimeters. The first layer of a brush mold should be applied very thin to help capture the detail and avoid trapping air bubbles. Take your time and concentrate on the antlers before moving to the parting flanges. Once the first layer has gelled to a point it's firm but yet still tacky, you can mix the next batch of silicone. To increase the layer thickness, we're adding in our SC5001 thickening agent. Now that the initial detail coat is already applied, this allows us to build layer thickness quicker. We're also adding a few drops of the accelerator to speed up the gel process. As a helpful pro tip, we like to keep a stopwatch nearby to monitor our time and remind us to keep moving along quickly.
Before we apply our third layer of silicone, we'll demold the solid slab of silicone poured earlier. We then use a sharp knife and cut thick strips of the silicone. The strips are cut down to short lengths, and these will be used for the registration keys, where the silicone mold and the rigid support shell interface. Now we can lay down our third and final coat of silicone. While the silicone is still wet, but getting close to gel, we start adding the silicone registration keys around the back side. They may try to slide around if the silicone is still early in the cure, so timing is helpful in keeping them in place. Once the silicone layers have cured sufficiently, we can begin to add the rigid support shell. First, we spray rocket release to help removal of the shell later on. Our BR75D is a fast-acting, brushable, rigid polyurethane that works great for making durable support shells on small to medium-sized molds. It features a convenient one-to-one -one mix ratio, has a 10 to 15 minute working time, and self-thickens once mixed without the need of extra fillers. This allows you to build layers quickly on irregular surfaces without excess draining. Once the first layer of BR75D gels, after about 15 to 20 minutes, the second layer can be mixed and applied. We add a small amount of pigment to help distinguish the layers as material is applied. Now we can see where thicker and thinner areas are in comparison to the first layer. We continue to work the material around to ensure good coverage. A third layer is applied to further thicken the support shell and material is allowed to cure for two to three hours. At that point, we can begin removing the styrene splitter board and clay in preparation for making the second half of the mold. Some of the flashing is trimmed with a knife to help clean up the area. Hot glue is removed from the antler with rubbing alcohol. Thicker areas can be carefully trimmed with a bandsaw. More thorough trimming will be done later when both halves are finished. Modeling clay can be used to clean up any small detail areas. The surfaces are cleaned with rubbing alcohol to remove any unwanted clay residue. Silicone is fantastic at picking up the fine texture and grain of organic parts like these antlers, so we want to ensure the details are exposed for molding. We use our zip mold release for releasing silicone from silicone. While silicone doesn't typically stick to many material surfaces, silicone will stick to itself and a good coating of mold release is a must. A small acid brush is used to get released into deeper features like the registration keys because sometimes spraying can miss these areas. Once the keys are addressed, we can spray an even coat of zip over the entire pattern. Now we can start the second mold half and proceed exactly as we did for the first half. Three layers of TC5024 silicone backed up with three layers of the BR75D. When the final layer is cured, we can use the bandsaw again to trim our mold clean it up and get it apart. You'll want to sand any sharp corners to avoid scraping or cutting your hands when working with it. Using some reverse pliers, we carefully split the halves apart. Remove both rigid sport shells and then demold the antler from the silicone halves. To help hold the oddly shaped mold upright during casting, we make a simple support stand using a large diameter dowel and wood base. Secure the dowel to the base. It's a good idea to wash the silicone mold prior to casting to remove any leftover residues or clay and start your castings with a clean mold surface. Warm water and dish soap is all you need. Don't use solvents or you can shorten the lifespan of the mold. To help hold the silicone mold skins in place, we apply some Vaseline to the registration keys to increase the suction grip in the pockets. Place the silicone onto the rigid shell, ensuring all keys are fully seated in the pockets. Repeat process for the other mold half. It's worth noting that the opposite set of antler molds can be made at the same time we're making the first set, but we wanted to keep the tutorial process simpler and go step by step without interruptions. We built the second antler mold using the same process from preparation to completion. Before we cast our first set of reproduction antlers, a coat of rocket release is sprayed onto the mold. Rocket release is a non-silicone based mold release that works well for parts that will be painted later on. 
The molds can be strapped together with stretchy tape like this, or even clamps if desired. On larger molds, bolts with nuts are often used for best results. We're using BJB's TC804 low viscosity one-to-one -one rigid polyurethane system to cast the antlers. A small amount of yellow oxide and white pigment are added to create a natural off-white base color. TC804 features a convenient one-to-one -one by volume mixing ratio, seven to eight minute working time, good heat resistance, and low moisture sensitivity, producing tough, non-brittle castings. In many cases, vacuum degassing is not required thanks to its low viscosity and low surface tension properties. We use the double cut mix method to minimize the chance of unmixed resin ending up in our castings. Our mold is filled up to a point below the top level and the mold is rocked back and forth while tapping the sides to dislodge as many air bubbles as possible and capture all the fine detail. The second mold is filled and the process is repeated to ensure the detail is captured. The molds are topped off with casting material to complete the fill. After about 50 to 60 minutes, we can safely demold the antlers. Thinner sections, like the antler tips, take longer to cure, while thicker sections cure much faster. So be careful not to demold too quickly until you become familiar with the casting characteristics of the part and material used. Our mold comes apart nicely, and the parts show minimal flashing, so cleanup will be quick and easy. To add a realistic finish to the cast antlers, we use a palette of alcohol-based paints to provide a natural looking color wash over the base color of the pre-pigmented cast urethane. A mixture of browns, olive green, and off-white are used. Just as dirt, grime, and damage are accumulated in real life, the color assortment accentuates the highs and lows of the antler's details in realistic fashion. Once we're happy with the color wash, the paint is sealed with a satin clear coat, which will help protect the faux finish for years to come. A commercially available antler mounting kit finishes off these beautiful pieces, and all that's left now is to find a nice spot on the wall to hang our masterpiece. Thanks for watching. You can find links to the BJB products used in the making of this video in the description. We have a wide variety of quality mold making and casting materials with technical help to choose the right product for your application. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to BJB's YouTube channel and social media. We have many beginner and advanced videos, as well as tech tips to help take the mystery out of materials.